What is the most important fencing lesson? What's the most valuable thing that fencing teaches you? That's a tough call. But if I had to pick just one, it would be this one. Now, when I say fencing, I'm referring to what I call classical fencing, which is fencing the way it was taught to me, and fencing the way everybody did it, or at least tried to do it, prior to around 1980. In classical fencing, you use the sword as if it were sharp. You fence the way you should fence in a duel. Your goal is to touch your opponent and never, ever be touched by your opponent. To understand what I consider the most important fencing lesson, you have to understand the context. You have to know how classical fencing is practiced. Now, if you're not a fencer, there's no reason in the world you should know about this. If you started fencing after 1980, you may not know about this either. You've probably never seen it. There's a standard practice we refer to as calling touches. Now, a touch means somebody got stabbed. But we don't say he stabbed his opponent, although that's what we're describing. We're a bit more gentil than that. We say he touched his opponent. A touch is when the point of the weapon clearly and distinctly fixes against the opponent's target. And the blade bends sufficiently that if it had been sharp, it would have penetrated the opponent's body about two or three inches. When you start practicing with a partner, one of the first things you do is take turns attacking each other. You learn what it feels like to deliver the touch. You learn what it feels like to receive the touch. Every time your partner hits you, you call out touche. That's French. It means I have been hit. Your partner replies merci. That's French too. It means thank you. But we take it a step further than that. Suppose your partner calls a touch, but you don't think it was any good. You think maybe you hit with the side of the point and not dead on with the point. Or maybe it wasn't solid, the blade didn't flex enough. When your partner calls out touche, you decline that touch by calling out pas de touche or, or pas valable, which means no touch. Your partner says merci, and you're good to go again. To give you an example, here's a short clip of two of my students having a little practice bout. You can hear me officiating off camera, but listen to the way they call their touches. So here's the thing. You call every touch you receive. Every time. Maybe you're just doing a drill. You call your touches. Maybe you're doing a little informal sparring. You call your touches. Maybe you're fencing a formal contest or bout. You call your touches. But what if it's a really big tournament and you've trained hard for years and everything is riding on this. If you lose, you can't go home. And if you win, you get the girl, the gold watch and everything. You call your touches. What if your opponent isn't calling his touches? You call your touches. Your opponent is not the locus of control of your behavior. You are. Now, why is this important? Well, because by learning to call touches, you learn that telling the truth is more important than winning. And it makes telling the truth a habit. See, the goal of classical fencing isn't to develop great fencers. The goal of classical fencing is to develop great people. You don't live to fence well. 
you fence to live well. Now, if you were to ask, most people would probably say, yeah, sure, it's important to be honest, of course. But saying it and living it are two different things. Look around the world of sport. When was the last time you saw a player call a penalty against himself? You know, walk up to the ref and say, hey, I, I was out of bounds, ref, or I was off sides, or no, I fouled him. When was the last time you saw a batter say to the ump, hey, that was a strike, not a ball? Or a base runner say, no, he was there first, I'm out. Just trying to imagine it seems kind of Twilight Zone crazy, doesn't it? If you know of any examples of a player doing anything like that, I'd love to hear about it. A classical fencer does that all the time. There's a great flick called The Wild One, 1953. You should see it. Laszlo Benedict directed, it stars Marlon Brando. Now there's a lot to recommend this movie. Well, for one thing, Brando. <laughs> it's also got a very cool jazz soundtrack Maynard Ferguson played on it. It was the original outlaw biker movie and it had a huge impact on popular culture. But here's the reason I mention it. See, the protagonist, Johnny Strabler, played by Brando, has a motorcycle trophy that's his prized possession. He carries it with pride strapped to his headlight for all to see. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Johnny didn't win that trophy. One of his guys stole it and gave it to him. See, a lot of people as long as they have the trophy to show off, they don't care how they got it. Maybe you've heard the saying, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. As long as you put a W in the win column, it doesn't matter how you do it. It's only the final tally of wins and losses that counts. To the classical fencer, that's not true at all. How you win is much more important than whether you win. You must win honestly. You must win impeccably. You must win in such a way that even the opponent whom you've just defeated will celebrate your victory. And on the flip side of that, you must lose in such a way that even the opponent who has just defeated you will praise your skill and gallantry. We don't see that very much. You still see it sometimes in boxing, and you see it in classical fencing. We say, gracious and dignified in defeat, humble and gentle in victory. That's what puts the class in classical.